especially I want to tell you God has given him a huge responsibility. He is the president also of the United Bible Societies. United Bible Society ni be the president huh? There are more than 200 national Bible societies in the world. Uh, national Bible Society And the United Bible Societies is the third largest NGO in the world. After the United Nations and the Red Cross. United Nations and the Red Cross ni and we thank God that God has chosen this man from a very small tribe and from a very small state to lead this global organization. And he is the first Asian to do that. He has finished his second term as a president. And he was supposed to end in October last year. But the global board wanted him to continue. And so they elected him as the president emeritus. And again, President Emeritus And so he will lead this organization. Until the Lord calls him home. So please remember him in prayer. That God will give him wisdom. That God will give him grace. Metella. God bless you. God bless you all. My relationship with the most honorable Purno Sangma. Angni Mandir Ahumana Krabigapa, Purno Sangma Baksa, and get hungry money. I cannot share this with anyone. Ah, Darang Mumbai Akwa and Kuja. Because Madame is here with us. You know, Madame Maximak Sadong Anigaman. And Sister Mrs. Sangma is here. Madame Sangma Badonga. Many years ago, we had only one television channel in India. It was the Doordarshan. And they never allow Christian programs in Doordarshan. But Billy Graham asked me if we could, he could speak to the people of India through the television. And at that time, Honorable Pono Sangma was sec uh, Minister for Information and Television of India. And at that time, Honorable Pono Sangma was Minister for Information and Television of India. And I, I asked him if we could do this. I said, surely we could do this. He gave me permission. So we prepared the program. We took many people from Northeast India to America and recorded. And recorded Dr. Graham's speech. But then the newspapers got hold of it. And when the people read of this, the leaders of the other religions, I will not tell you their names, they wrote very strong letters to the Prime Minister of India. Prime Minister of India and to the, the Minister, Mr. Purno Sangma. Minister Purno Sangma to stop Billy Graham from preaching in Doordarshan in India. And when I read this in the newspaper, remember I rushed to New Delhi. And I met this great man, Purno Sangma. I read that big Bamande Purno Sangma Hogrunga. And he said, Yes, we received these letters from all the other religions stopping Billy Graham to preach. 
do not worry. I will not stop Dr. Graham preaching through Doodasha on Christmas. And you are older, older than many of you. You must have heard Dr. Graham preach because of Porno Sangma. I'm very grateful to him for, my, for what he did. May God bless his family. Shall we pray? God, a heavenly Father, now as we, your children, we sit at your feet. Speak to us, O God. And give us the humility to respond to you. Oh, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The greatest and the most historical event in all of history. Was when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. Now we do not know who invented crucifixion. But it's easier to die by being shot on your head. And the ones called Sligoisia Nabate Altubata. It's easier to die by having a throat cut. I mean, as called Sligoisia Ro Hadakatora Sutition Altubatkua. It's easier to die by being hanged. Aaron again, Antago, Kadundisia Nabate Altubatkua. But to die by being crucified, and the Bachiso Capesinade is the most horrible way to die. One of men. They put nails on the hands and the feet of the prisoner. And they hang him on a cross. And for days he hangs there trying to die, but he will not die. And it was such a horrible way to die. That the, the governments of the world put a stop to that. And the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ had to die the most horrible kind of death. As he suffered for my sins and for your sins. Remember when the religious leaders arrested Jesus? They wanted to kill him. But they did not have that authority. Only the governor Pilate had that authority. So they took Jesus to Pilate. Now Pilate, the governor, examined thousands of prisoners. And he always knows who's wrong and who's not who's right. So when he examined Jesus, the Bible tells us, he told the people, I see no reason to put Jesus to death. But the religious leaders encouraged the people to say, crucify him. And at that time, the Bible tells us, at the festival of the Jews, the governor could release one prisoner. And Pilate said, now I have a, a way to release Jesus. I will bring Jesus to the people. And I will bring a very bad murder. Barabbas to the people and ask them to choose. Because in his mind, he was sure they'll choose the murderer to be you know, to be crucified and Jesus to be released. So he came to the people and he said, Whom shall I release? Barabbas or Jesus. Jesus. And the Bible tells us with one voice. 
You'll go back home filled with the joy and the peace of God in your life. Now it was a Roman custom before they crucify anyone, they would whip the prisoner. But it was a special kind of whip. It was three whips tied together. And at the end of each whip, there were four sharp pieces of metal. So with one whip, there were twelve wounds on the whole body of the person. And they would whip the prisoner forty times. And many prisoners died while they were whipped. They were being whipped. But because Jesus was a Jew, they whipped Jesus 39 times. So that in the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, as he was being whipped, there were 468 wounds. And and from each wound, blood came out. And the Bible tells us that when the soldiers saw there was no blood on his head, they made a crown of thorns and they pushed it on his head and blood came out from his head so that now my beloved Christian friend if we look at Jesus as he suffered for us there was blood from his head to his feet. It was a horrible sight. Isaiah 800 years before that prophesied. He had no form nor comeliness and when we see him we, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Then they led Jesus outside of Jerusalem. With the two murderers. And they made him carry his cross. And he stumbled and fell because of the loss of blood. And they compelled Simon of Sarini from Africa to have Jesus carry the cross. And in all of history, we'll never forget it. Many years ago, in a very big newspaper of India, uh, one leader wrote this. Uh, that Christianity is a Western religion. He is wrong. 
Christ was not born in America. Uh, Christ was not born in America. He was not born in England. England no bad chiang ja. He was born in the middle of the world. Wa kasak ni bi jachi ke bawa chia ha. To be the Lord of all the world. Jeda pade pla ka kasak ni ke telong gen. And the first man who helped Jesus. Aros kang ke bawa Jesus ko tak sa ke bawa mandera. Was not a white man. Wa ra mande bi an bi an bi bul ke pokong ja. It was a black man. Wa an bi gal bi sem sa. And when they came to Calvary, the soldiers started hammering nails on the uh, hands and the feet of those two murderers and on Jesus. And those two murderers, they shouted and yelled at those soldiers. But the Bible tells us Jesus was silent. Jesus the drip to watch him. Eight hundred years before that, Isaiah wrote. I don't believe it. Chat it now, scan your phone. Isaiah say, "He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers, he openeth not his mouth." Nikhe boli onar abayng pamis pisag ta ukram baha arua ni kranko jaha. They gave him medicated wine to ease the pain. Uni sadu kani ko komiat na le mang na una sam ko ba una ha. But Jesus refused. And the bad Jesus ko je sa ka. Because he wanted to drink the big bitter drinks of death for us. Mane nam gita ko pa siyani ko wa ang sumi asal na nagdas ka chan. He wanted to suffer all of death. Aru yan rat nam gita ni ko wa ang sumi na sakuna nas ka. Show the world. Agar sak nama Yesus na God loves us. Aro anda kian cina kah sani ko bro. And is willing to forgive us sins. Wang cini paprang ko kima kah naga dah dah obat singing. Because of the blood that was shed on the cross. Wang si solo jukwing kah cini kemen. Now listen to what the Bible tells us. Sastro mai ko agan naik kena tuna. The Bible tells us. Sastro ang cina agan. As Jesus was suffering on that cross. Then salo Jesus si solo sak nainga. There were people around that place. Aru wa biya po mandirang gulang cham. They were looking at Jesus. Aru Jesus ko niyeng cham. Instead of feeling sorry for Jesus. Aru amang Jesus na dike kasa sakay cham. They were laughing at Jesus. Kasa sakay na pati wa mga ra ko kating stakay cham. We really killing Jesus. Aru dike Jesus ko kating stakay chon dike cham. Oh, you save others, save yourself. Na kapun na kudy jokata na ba na ko jokat po. Those blind people. Yeah, they did not realize that God had foreordained for Jesus to die on the cross. Uh, isolsa, jisuko, chisolo, sinagata, and only through the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Can I as a sinner and you as a sinner can find peace and forgiveness in our lives? Because the Bible says neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name other heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And you know, when Paul wrote to the people of Corinth, Paul, Corinth, don't be mad at me. This is what he said. For I am determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Na si mga nigisay pa ni ko, Jesus Christo ko, Jesus at kapan ko yan na kreyang kapan ko binasya. Why did Paul say that? May ni kung Paul ko agan na ha? Because God had locked up in the cross. Mana isol ko si solo nake donah ketel na ha? The secret of the universe. Aro yano ding tangman sa agas agdi donu gaman ang ko. And your secret and my secret. One ang ni aro ang ni donu gaman lah ko. And the only way that we can find peace and forgiveness in our life. Jeta ko de ang sini jangki tangan yu yu tom tom ani ko aro kay maka ani ko matge. Is by way of the cross. Aro one si my dear friends, as Christ did not die on that cross, can we find our way back to God? That's why it was important for Jesus to stay on that cross. We deserve hell and judgment. But God gave us Christ. 
So if you put your faith and your trust in Jesus, you'll find peace and joy in your heart. Many people say we're living in a modern age, the age of artificial intelligence. You must make your message relevant to this world we live in. Even if but the most relevant message for us today is that Christ died on the cross for our sins. And without that, try what you want in the world. You can never have peace and joy in your heart. I know many families in Shillong. They have a lot of money. Uh, no, no, peace, no peace in their homes. Only Christ can give you peace in your home. The crowd was shouting. If you are the Son of God, nice. come down from the cross. They were ridiculing Jesus, including the two thieves who were crucified on the right and the left of Jesus Christ. But the Bible tells us, one of those thieves, as he looked at Jesus, he must have remembered what his mother told him when he was a little child. That one day the Messiah will come. And as he hung on that cross, and as he looked at Jesus, instead of shouting, he forgave those who hammered the nails on the hands and the feet of Jesus. He said, Father, forgive them. He uh, no, uh, must have remembered what his mother told him. He said, Oh, this must be the Messiah. And I thank God for all of you mothers here this morning. That you're teaching your children Jesus Christ. And then what the Bible tells us. He began to rebuke his friend on the other cross. Dost thou not fear God, he said? Thou art the same condemnation. And we indeed justly we receive the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then the Bible tells us. He turned to Jesus. And he cried out to Jesus. Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus gave one of the most amazing answers. I'm sure the angels in heaven were surprised. He said, Verily I say unto thee. Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. My dear Christian friends, there is forgiveness and mercy with God. That thief is going to heaven. Jesus took him by the death of the cross. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. So here was a thief. Here was a murderer. He was dying. He turned to Jesus. He did not say, even say, Lord, forgive me. He did not say, Lord, 
Have mercy on me. He's a murderer. He does not know those words. All he could say was, Lord, remember me. And Jesus answered, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And for all of you who have come to this meeting this morning, with problems in your homes, finding no solutions in your life, there is hope for you. That thief never dreamed that he'll meet with Jesus that day. That he met with Jesus. As his life was changed. You do never dream that you'll meet with Jesus this morning. You never plan to meet with God today. I believe God has brought you here. You might meet again with Jesus. That man was not saved by good works. He was not even baptized. But he's in heaven. How? My kind. One of the most beautiful words in the New Testament is the word forgiveness. That day Jesus forgave him of every sin he committed. All the stealing, all the killing, all the killing, all the fighting, all the telling lies, all was forgiven. That is the power of the forgiveness of God. And he is in heaven. He found peace in his heart. Now there are three things in this incident that tells us about the gospel. The first thing tells us about repentance. Now this is the only deathbed repentance recorded in the Bible. It's the only one. So that no one of us here this morning. Uh, no one of us here this morning. Uh, can lose hope of peace and forgiveness. You may not be an important person. But God loves you. And it's the only one deathbed repentance recorded in the Bible. And we should not take advantage of the long suffering of God. That's why it's very important if this morning the Holy Spirit is speaking to your lives, enlightening into your heart, that there are sins you have to confess. Don't put it off, my friends. What is your sin? What have you done? Uh, Perhaps there's fighting at home. Or you've heard someone by your words. You've told a lie about someone. Or you've cheated. I do not know what you've done. But no matter what you've done, no matter who you are, God has given us a conscience. And we know when we've done wrong. No matter what sin you've committed, your mother or your father 
maybe does not know that sin. Your wife maybe does not know that sin. Your husband maybe does not know that sin. No matter what you've done, you've come in dependence before the cross. God will forgive you and cleanse you. You'll have peace and joy in your heart. Later on, I'm going to give you that opportunity to come to the cross. And when I invite you to come to the cross, you come. Then the second thing it teaches about believing. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house is the word of God. And the thief thought in the future. Remember me when thou comest into the future. But Jesus said, Today. Yes, if you come in repentance before the cross today. And, and renew your trust in Jesus. Your life will be changed. And go home. Feel the peace of God. I want to speak a little bit about the word remember. It's not, not wise, not nice to say that God forgets. It's not reverent to say that God forgets. We as human beings, we forget. Next time we come back to here, we will all forget the names of my beloved leaders. But I want to tell you a true story. It happened in Shillong. There was this very poor lady. Her husband had died. And she had two boys, one six year old and one four year old boy. And she would go every hour from one house to another house every hour to clean the clothes, to wash the utensils. And thereby she could feed the children. And they would always go with her. But this particular home, this home did not like children. So she told her children, you stay home, mommy is going to work, and in one hour I'll come back. Be good boys. So she left the house, she locked the house. Put a door outside. Aaron again. After she got the car, when she knew boys are boys, they would run out. Aaron again. Now, this time, women just take care of the cat again. Now, about twenty minutes after she had gone, only young lady, me, go to the same one. It happened in locality of Jiao in Shillong. Yeah, Jiao locality on the Kiong Ha. The women heard a noise. Of children crying. Ah, bisa ni grapa ni ko. Then he turned toward the noise. Aro nakin wa atlin yata ha. And he saw smoke. Aro unon wa ku ko nka ha. And he ran toward that smoke. Aro nakin wa ku nka ko pachina katang ha. He saw the house on fire. Aro nakin wa nukara wa al kaming ha chum. They tried to break the lock, but they couldn't. Aro nakin wa dalapo okna tama hindi pa matcha. Then the men came. Aro nun mande saksay pa ha. They broke the lock. Aro nakin wa dalapo doktor. The inside was full of smoke. Aro nakin wa I saw, saw the elder brother, little brother, holding his little brother in his chest. And they were both badly burned. And they quickly rushed them to the Welsh Mission Hospital there in Jayao. But on the way, those little boys, they died. What happened? The mother in a hurry to go to work. He forgot to put off the kerosene stove. And the boys were playing. They kicked the kerosene stove, and the house got on fire. They died because she forgot. But the Bible never forgets. 
God says never forgets about He sends the rain and the sun and the just and the unjust. Uh, you know, and the And the Bible tells us God never forgets our sins. Be sure your sins will find out, says the word of God. God is not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth shall he also reap. And then the Bible tells us, For God shall bring every work into judgment. With every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil, God is going to judge our sin. My dear Christian friends, what is your sin? That you've always said, I will one day I will confess to God. But you kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. Till one day death comes. And on judgment day, all our sins will be laid before us. Since we've committed 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we've forgotten those sins. But God has a record. And we see those sins on the record of God. See, oh Lord, you yes, say, remember that sin. But it'll be too late to ask for forgiveness. There is nothing we can hide from God. The Bible says, Thou hast set our iniquities before thee. Our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. How do you stand before God? Then the Bible tells us, God never forgets you. He loves you. Many people may not think very much of you. But you know, God knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows your bad habits. Oh, he knows the foul language that comes from your mouth time, time, from time to time. He knows the jealousy in your heart. But, but still, he loves you. The Bible says, How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. God remembers you. But the Bible tells us one beautiful thing. He can forget our sins because of the blood that was shed on the cross by Jesus. Something wonderful happened on that cross. What is all my big God took my sins. So and your sins and laid them on Jesus. The Bible says for had made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God. Because Jesus shed his blood on the cross. God can forget our sin. Yes, that sin that will damn us to hell. God can forget. He says, I, even I am he that blotted out thy transgressions for my own sake. Uh, in the case, 
I will not remember thy sin. Because Jesus died on the cross. He was buried. And on the third day, God raised him from the dead. That is why. God cannot remember our sins. No matter what sin you've committed. I've not told this story before, but I'll tell it to you now. We were having a meeting like this in, in Malki Ground in, in, in Shilong. Many years ago. There was a lot of fighting between tribals and non tribals. And one boy came forward to give his life to Christ. And when the pastor was trying to counsel him, he had two bombs. He said, I came here to blast these bombs and this meeting when I'm fed up. He said, I blast these bombs and this meeting when I'm fed up. I want to change Shilong. 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 But now you realize only Christ can change Shilong. No, Jack, no. When they give you a Shilong, I want to change Shilong. You know, people commit many sins. Uh, but no matter what you've committed, another story I'll tell you. Many young people here, I'll tell you this. I got a telephone call from a young man. He wanted to meet me. I said, Come to my house. I welcome in the door. I went to the living room. And before he sat down, he began to cry. He sat down, he began to cry so much, he began to shake. And I held him and I began to shake with him. And after he shook, I, he started stopping. I asked him what happened. And listen to what he said. He said, Pastor, I'm a Sunday school teacher. But last week, I told my girlfriend to kill the baby in her womb. I become a murderer. I began to cry again. Then I led him in to kneel before the cross. And he cried for forgiveness. And one week later, he brought his girlfriend home. And my wife was with me and we prayed together. My friend, no matter what sin you've committed, you come before the cross. You are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. You find peace and joy in your heart. You know, most of us, we feel we are good enough. We go to church, we read the Bible, we pray, we're good enough. But we're not good enough, my friends. We enter heaven. The Baptist church cannot take you to heaven. Only the cross can take you to heaven. You can do all that the church asks you to do. But if you've never knelt before the cross of Jesus, heaven will not open for you, my friends. We're all sinners before God. We need to come in repentance before God. The third day tells us about open confession. Imagine all the people were ridiculing Jesus. The soldiers were also ridiculing Jesus. But this man had the courage to ask Jesus for help. This is your moment. This is your moment to come to Jesus.
Have you ever brought your life to cross to the cross of Christ? You may never have a moment like this again in your life. I'm looking at my wife, that's why I'm rushing through. You're not here by accident. God has brought you here. You know, I've met many Christians. You know what they tell me? Master, God seems to have forgotten my prayer. One man said, Pastor, it seems that my prayer gets stuck in the roof of my house. God is not answering my prayers. But this day, this morning, God saw your prayers. That's why I brought you here. To answer your prayer. And the answer is at the foot of the cross of Jesus. You say, yes, I need Christ in my home. I need Christ in my life. What should I do? The Bible says you've got to do three things. First, you've got to be willing to say, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. And secondly, you have to receive him by faith. You don't have to understand it. Let me explain a little bit about faith. Because we talk about faith all the time. We all live by faith. When you sat in that chair, did you test that chair where they hold your weight? But by faith you knew whoever made that chair has made it that you will not fall down. That is your faith. Now put that faith in Jesus. You cannot, you cannot understand it. But Jesus by faith. I accept you into my life. Come and live in me. And then thirdly, you've got to openly come to Jesus. Everyone that Jesus called, he called them openly. Uh, but, 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 it's not easy to follow Jesus during these days. You might have to face persecution. I preach all over India. And I know it's not easy to follow Jesus. My friends, I want you to give your life to Jesus. Christ will live with you. I'll never forget him. Forget when I met the twelve wives of those twelve people who were, whose throats were cut by the Mediterranean Sea. Remember in Mali of the of the ISIS. We brought them to Washington to meet with them. Uh, so, they were so sure of their life in Christ. Are they strong by themselves? No, Christ gave them strength. So I want to invite you this morning. Come, come to the cross of Christ. And ask Jesus to come into your life. Jesus says, Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden. I will give you rest. This is your moment of God. What the Holy Spirit is moving in our midst this morning. Bringing into remembrance the sin that you've committed. That you need to lay before the cross. This is your hour of decision. 
Jan na na tikher ani sumai wan. Shall we close our eyes for prayer and bow our heads, please? And sing at sing skoran kotop no pe mi koran kamba tsepe bi na. As our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. And sing at sing mi koran kamba tsepe skoran kotop no pe ngon. If you this morning, ya prengo. Like to renew your relationship with Jesus. Jesus Christ, I'm so thankful that you're going to talk to me now. Invite Him into your lives. Go and ask Him to come into your home. Invite Him into your home. I will not knock down on your combo. I would like to pray for you. I want to smell the beat now. Then I'm not there. And in order that I can pray for you, I just want to smell the beat now again. I want you just quietly raise your hands. Yes, please. I want to pray for you. Oh, so what? Sina, what? 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 So what? 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 The Lord bless you. 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 The back. Kisanti. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Put your hands down again in the side. Yes. The Lord bless you. So how did them look? Put your hands down again. There. I pray for you. O God, my Father, I come before you. O Apa, nak ni makan orang lagi barang. To pray for your children who raise their hands this morning. Nak ni dia orang je mangan dia pengu atau tangi jahat kosmata. They raise their 